Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it's that time of the week again. It is lecture time. All right, this week's topic guys is twofold, which most of my lectures typically do cover two or more topics. Um, and the first topic that we cover this week is talking a little bit about digging deeper, digging inside of the candlesticks, specifically when you're looking at trade management. And one of the things that you'll see in this lecture is that a bottoming tail in one time frame oftentimes is a pivot in another time frame. So you guys are looking at these charts, excuse me, but unfortunately, you're not looking at the bigger time frame or the lower time frame. You're simply trading in a vacuum and you're not looking at what else is around you, right? Looking at the forest through the trees, so to speak, and you're missing opportunities because of it. You're missing better entries. You're missing areas you could raise your stop loss. You're also missing out on not taking trades. You might actually not want to take a trade after you look at the higher or the lower time frame. So you want to look inside the candlesticks and see what that topping tail means. See what that bottoming tail really means. What it really represents in the context of the chart. Because most of you are just vacuum traders. You're just looking at one time frame and you're thinking that is it. That's all there is to know. All right. So today we dig deep into that where we look at a 15 minute chart, a five minute chart, and a two minute chart. It's the same chart but we're looking at it in the bigger context and how they can be different. And one of the best ways that you can get more money out of your trades is to drill down. So perhaps, for example, you're in a 15 minute trade and then you're, you're wanting to add to this position because it's such a good position. We're, most of you are just randomly adding on strength. That is not technical analysis trading, that's gambling. So if you were to drill down on that 15 minute chart down to say the two minute chart, you might find a little bit of a pivot or a buy setup, a legitimate area that you could add possibly raise your stop and make even more money. So I talk about that also a little bit how this can keep you out of bad trades as well. The other thing I talk about in here guys is the need for all of you, probably 99% of you is to just woosah, just relax, chill out and relax. I'm seeing a lot of these furu traders out there losing 40 grand on biotechs, losing 16,000 on biotechs, losing 80,000 on biotechs. Stop trading one trick penny biotech stocks in the most volatile market we've had in 10 years. You're not gonna get rich quick, guys. So what if you made two, three, four, five grand on one trade? Is that life changing? Not really, okay, not really. Being successful in this business is a consistent process that takes time, generally years, okay? So what I wanna say is twofold. One, if you're a newer trader in this specific environment, like the last one month, chill out, lower your risk. You should only be trading $10 risk per trade anyway. That means not losing more than $10 per trade. Cut that in half to $5, why? Because the market volatility, check out the daily chart here of the spies. One day right now, one day is the equivalent of like two weeks a couple months ago, right? Notice, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, the bars were this big. Now they're this big. They're this big. One day now is the equivalent of a week or two. That's a volatility you're not ready for if you're a new trader. Calm down. The market's going to be here next month. It's going to be here next year. It's going to be here in five years or 10 years. Okay, learn from the environment. I'm not saying don't trade it. I'm just saying relax a little bit. Cut your risk in half. Stop trying to get rich quick, okay? The other thing I wanna talk about, and I'll put it on the screen, is for you investors out there, for you longer term core traders, relax. We've seen this before. This isn't new, okay? I know you all think it's new, and maybe it's new to you, but the market has seen this before. Okay, you look at a daily chart and you go, oh my gosh, chicken little, the sky is falling, which you'll see in the presentation. You look at a weekly chart and go, oh, okay, it's kind of ugly, you're not so bad. You look at the monthly chart and you're like, what are we all worried about? Take a look at that monthly chart. What are we all so worried about? So for long-term investors, relax. I saw and heard in 2008 and 2009, everybody's like, screw the market, F Wall Street. I'm never putting my money in the stock market ever again. Well, how did that go for you from 2009 to today? How'd that go for you? 
You missed the biggest, second biggest run in market history. Okay, the stock market is unequivocally the best place you can put your money over the long run. If your time horizon is more than 10 years, stop being a baby, man up, girl up, and leave your money in there, and in 20, 30 years, pull it out when you're ready to retire. Now, if you're less than 10 years away from retirement, we can have a different conversation. But if you're more than 10 years out from retirement, just enough of it already, okay? This too shall pass. Okay, you hear Warren Buffett, what's his comment? Buy when others are fearful, sell when others are greedy. You guys are all doing the opposite of that because you're so scared, enough, okay? It's hoopla, it's garbage. The media has you guys in a, in a frenzy, in a hissy. You're buying toilet paper probably, right? As you're speaking, watching this on your phone. Get over it, this too shall pass. Even if it takes another year, it takes another six days, who knows, it will pass, okay? So with that, guys, let's get to the lecture here soon. A little bit about trade management, a little bit about drilling deep, digging inside the candlesticks to help you get better entries, help keep you out of trades, and just in general, be an overall better trader, as well as the large picture approach, guys. One last quick comment. You do realize that over the last 100 plus years, the market is up 73% of the time. 73% of the time, the market goes up. In the last 40 years, the market is up over 80% of the time. When I say of the time, I mean each year, okay? Each year, 73% of the time it's up over the last 100 years, and over the last 40, it's over 80%. Chill out, all right? You can get a 14-day, $1 trial into the Live Traders chat room, guys, by clicking the link in the description. Also, if you like this video, please click like and then hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, hammer that subscribe button, all right? I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's topic is reading candlesticks for management looking inside the bar. So what that basically means is last week, if you guys recall, I think it was last week, maybe it was a couple weeks ago, um, we talked a little bit, not a, t not a ton, but a little bit about trade management. We talked a little bit about pivot management. And you'll remember seeing this specific slide. Um, I think, again, I think it was last week where we have this beautiful breakdown at $20.50 um, with a 25 cent stop. You're in at 20.50, your stop is 20.75, it drops consolidates, drops, bounces, drops, bounces. And remember, what we talked about as a quick refresher um, is not lowering your stop too quickly, right? Wait for the stock, in this case, let's use this pivot right here, okay, right there. Waiting for this to at least retest the prior pivot low before lowering your stop from here down to here, okay? So that's that was the basic thing we talked about uh, with regard to management last week. So we'll come back to these slides in a couple minutes. I showed this slide as well, uh, one on the long side, one on the short side. Here's a beautiful little breakout, uh, wide range bar rips. You're in at 86 bucks, stops 85, 84, which is really tight, moves up, pulls back, moves up, but don't move your stops too quickly, okay? So now we're gonna take a little bit of a different direction using kind of these same charts all right, but I want you guys to think about digging inside the candlestick. Uh, I did this a couple months ago, but I'm gonna use a little bit of a different angle today, okay? So before I do that though, I wanna talk about a few misconceptions, all right? Because I think these are things that, that you guys think are just fact or it's just a given, but they're not. So you can't go broke taking profits. This is one I speak to frequently, all right? This is exactly how most of you go broke. You sell too soon or long before your target area, okay? Um, if you have a plan and the plan says two to one, then wait for two to one. Or if you have a plan and the plan says manage out on pivots, then manage out on pivots. And I'm gonna go back real quick to the last slide and I wanna show you what I'm talking about. So he says you can't go broke taking profits. Well, what if, okay? What if your management strategy was predicated upon five minute pivots? Fine, no problem, right? Okay, no big deal. But here's the thing, okay? If your management is predicated upon pivots, which means every once in a while, not all of the time, you'll get a monster winner. 
this would be what I would consider a monster winner. 12 and a half R or 12 to 1 risk to reward. Reward to risk is fantastic. You don't get these trades that often, right? So what if you got out right over here for maybe 2 to 1 or 3 to 1? Well, you gave up 10 to 1, didn't you? But your trade management is predicated upon, say, 1 out of 10 trades, 1 out of 15 trades, 1 out of 20 trades going 12, 13 R. Now what? So you might take 50 trades in a month, and maybe you only get two of these a month, three of these a month. And if you sell these two or these three trades too soon and get two R instead of 12, what have you done? You've cost yourself 30 R that month. So absolutely, yes, you can go broke taking profits. And it's how most of you do go broke by taking your profits too soon. Getting to break even is the goal, right? This is something that I go to break even more frequently than I should. This is merely what? A mental crutch for most traders. This is based upon fear. Your fear of loss is stronger than your hope for gain. So getting to break even is really not the goal. Getting to target is the goal. Now, there's two sides to this. The one side is this is loss aversion tactics, right? Oh, I got to get the break even. I got to get the break even. I got to get the break even. Okay, right? You ever notice that when a stock is going in your direction, you get all nervous and clammy hands and you're like, I got to get out. I got to move my stop up. But when it's going against you, some people are willing to give it more room when they shouldn't. Well, maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll come back. It's interesting, right? You're doing the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing to make money. Now, I do go to break even after one-to-one, -one, but I've proven it's not only a mental crutch, it's actually a profitable thing to do. But most traders, they get to break even too soon and they get shaken out. It actually happened to us on Guild today. It went one-to-one, -one, shook us out of break even, and then went about three-to-one to target, okay? Here's a great one. I love hearing this. This was one of my all-time favorites. Let your winners run, cut your losses. Wow, that's fantastic. That's like telling somebody, just buy the winning lottery ticket. Okay, how do you do that? How do you just buy the winning lottery ticket? Let your winners run, cut your losses. What a great mantra. How fantastic is that? Okay, we'd all be Warren Buffett if this was so easy to do. How do you know it's going to go $5? How do you know it's not going to go 22 cents and then turn around and go against you? So how do you cut your losses? Oh, by getting to break even. And by getting to break even means getting out too soon most of the time. So if you can see here, these mantras are, 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 are not even worth the, the paper they're printed on. Okay, Using stop losses only stops you out of winning trades. I love this one too. If you use a stop loss, all you're really doing is stopping yourself out of a winning trade. This is fantastic. This is, again, exactly how traders blow up trading accounts, okay? It only takes one or two trades, guys, to destroy an account, all right? To destroy an account, all right? If you're not smart, okay? I would agree that there are plenty of times where you take a stop, you stop out, and the trade goes in your direction and works. I would agree with this. It definitely happens. But how many times do you need to be wrong to destroy an account? Only once or twice. You only need to be wrong one or two percent of the time. You could take a hundred trades and be right on 98 of them, 97 of them. But those two or three that you're wrong on might be the end of your trading career. Okay. This is why we institute the 84% rule. Okay, and the last one is the trend is your friend, just write it. It kind of reminds me of let your winners run, cut your losses. Okay, guys, management is a give and take. All right, is your personality ready for this type of management? We go back to those pivots we just talked about, and I'll talk about them one more time. Not everybody is so inclined with their personality style to be able to manage out on pivots like this. Now, why is that the case? Because in giving this stock pivot management, in trying to get 10 or 12 or 15 R, what do you also have to do to get there? You have to be willing to give back significant profits to do it. Significant profits to do it. I want you to think about this for a second. Think about it. Let's take this area right here. Let's call it 8640 as your stop loss. Pay attention. This is important. All right. So you're in a 16 cent stop loss and you're at your stop is now 86.40.
So what do you have protected? About two and a half to one, right? The stock moves up, moves up, moves up, moves up. You're at 87.50 on this topping tail. 87.50. You're up a dollar fifty on a 16 cent stop loss. You're up nine R. How much is protected? Two and a half. Because you haven't put in this stop. You haven't raised your stop yet. So you don't know in real time, you don't know, will this topping tail come all the way back to 8640 and tag you? If it did, you went from a 9R gain to a 2.5R gain. Can you handle that if it were to happen? Can you? The answer for most traders is no. So don't just look at a chart and go, oh, yeah, I'll just manage it up on pivots. Raise the stop, raise the stop, raise the stop. Oh, this is easy peasy Japanesey. No, it's not. In real time, the little devil on your shoulder is going to be going, get out, get out, get out. And then you get out for 8 or 9R, and what happens? It goes up 12R. So you see where I'm saying here? You can't win. If it comes all the way back, you make 2.5R. If you get out, you give up 4R. So what do you do? You follow the plan. That's what you do. But the point I'm making is the trend is your friend. Ride it. Great. If you are capable of that level of discipline and patience. Okay? So these are just terrible trading misconceptions that people think. They're bullshit ideologies that don't really work in the real world. Okay? They can work for certain traders, but they don't work for most, especially the can't go broke taking profits one and the let your winners run and cut your losses crap. Okay, but now let's go deeper. So I want to talk a little bit about candlesticks. All right. And I haven't actually used these slides before. All right. These are these are new. They're not in any course. Uh, you're going, yes, they are. They're in PTS. They're not. These are different. They're different. Okay. So what we have here on the left are a red candlestick and a green candlestick. And on the right, a green candlestick and a red candlestick. I could have, I guess, made them the same, but whatever. You get the point. Okay. The only difference here is one has topping and bottoming tails and the other one doesn't. Okay. So the question then becomes, what's the difference? Are they the same? Right? Are they same? I can't. How about the? You can tell I don't spell check these things. All right. Are they the same? What do you guys think? On the left and on the right, are these exactly the same? I mean, they have the exact same amount of range, right? The range is identical on them. This one says resistance, this says support, this says resistance, this says support. Are they the same? That's the question. Are they the same? To many of you out there, you're looking at going, yes, they're the same. They're, they're both red, both green, both say resistance at the top, support at the bottom, blah, 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 blah. They're not even close to the same thing, right? Which I'm happy that most of you are getting that answer. They're not close. What's the difference then? Why is it that the left is more significant, right? What we're looking at on the left is more significant, stronger support, stronger resistance, okay? Yes, that is the word I'm looking for. Somebody got it exactly. Battle tested. Battle tested, okay? If you take a look at this, we know by definition, right? By definition that this opened right here, okay? Right there, and it closed down here. Okay, because it's red. But during the open, it possibly went higher, right? It possibly went higher and it was green. So this red bar you're looking at at one point in time was actually a little bit green. This tail was green. And then it came down, went all the way down to the bottom and bounced off the bottom. So there was a tug of war fought here. The buyers lost up here and the sellers lost down here. So there actually is some support right here because the buyers put in a tail, meaning there were more buyers in this range than sellers. But up here, there were more sellers in this range than buyers. Okay. So now if a stock were to retest this area, you would say there's some support here. How much? That's a topic of conversation that we could have here in a few more minutes. But for now, you could say there is support here is on the right hand side is there really support here we know all i really know is this stock opened here and it closed here that's all i know okay guys and i'm going to repeat this in a couple more minutes just because the time clicks or ticks from four minutes to five minutes and five minutes to six minutes and six minutes to seven minutes 
Does that really mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything. It's just an arbitrary number. Six o'clock is an arbitrary number, okay? Three minutes is an arbitrary number. Seven minutes is an arbitrary number. You know, we tend, most traders seem like they use one minute charts, two minute charts, five minute charts, 15 minute charts, six, yeah, sure. Some people use three minute charts. Some people use 10 minute charts. What's to say you couldn't use 12 minute charts? You could. What's to say you couldn't use 19 minute charts? You could, you could. Time is an arbitrary thing, okay? So when you look at this, we don't know if there's any battle here. We don't know that this is anywhere particularly special. It's just the clock ticked and the bar started over again. And the clock ticked and the bar started over again. So when you have tails, you know that there was a battle there, okay? You know there's a battle fought. And because of where the tail is, topping tail or bottoming tail, you know who won the battle, okay? So they're vastly different. I can genuinely say there is a certain level of support here. There's a certain level of resistance here. I cannot say that over here. I just don't know if it was just the clock ticked from four minutes to five minutes and it just kept on going up. There's no real support there. Let's take a look, okay? Now we see it in a slightly different capacity. So now we have one, two, three, four, five bars up, three red bars on the pullback, and then we go support with a red question mark. Is that support? Over here, Five bars up, three red bar pullback, very, very similar, but we have a bottoming tail. So over here, why should this be support? Think about it for a second. Why should that be support? What happened there, right here on the left, where my cursor is, what happened here that makes this support? Answer, nothing. The clock just ticked from four to five minutes or from two minutes to three minutes, or from nine minutes to 10 minutes. It just ticked over, and when the clock ticked, the new bar formed, and it kept going higher, and the clock ticked, and the new bar formed, and it kept going higher, and the clock ticked, and the new bar formed, and it kept going higher. On a different time frame, this is just one green bar. On a high enough time frame, this is just one solid green bar. But over here, I know something happened. I know that there was a battle fought here. In fact, we know it, this green bar right here, it opened right where the tip of my cursor is right there. And it actually was red for a minute, wasn't it? It was actually red for a little bit of time, came all the way back up, confirming the strength of the buyers and it moved higher. So now when we pull into this area, we know that there was a battle here, which means there's probably a level of support here. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you, oh my gosh, this is the greatest level of support you've ever seen. What I'm trying to get you guys to think about is the difference between this and this. This is just an arbitrary number going higher, 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 higher. The time ticks to the next bar, to the next bar, to the next bar, nothing happens, okay? Over here, we know something happened. We know that there was a little shakeup. A little red bar happened and it got engulfed and went higher. So the next time it comes up here or comes down to this area, buyers stepped up previously, which means buyers should step up again. Okay, let's take a look at it. So now we're taking that same chart. Okay, let me go back real quick. We're taking the same chart right here. Okay, right there. We're taking this. And now we're going deeper. We're looking deeper inside of it. So on the left, here's that same chart, okay? Draw a line all the way over here. There's that little red bar we talked about. So we know that this didn't go straight up. We know it went up, little hiccup, and then higher. Because of that hiccup, there's a certain level of support here, okay? And this is how charts are formed. This is the areas that we look for to see where a possible resistance point be, might be, where a possible support area might be, okay? And as it says at the bottom, like I just said, just because the clock ticks from four minutes to five minutes and a new bar forms does not automatically make it a new area of support. You have to have some type of test there, okay? A bottoming tail in one time frame 
is a potential pivot in another time frame. Okay? So just remember that. Time frames are arbitrary. Time is not a form of support. Price action is. I want to repeat this. Time is not a form of support. Price action is. What happened, what caused support here? The battle that was waged right there and the buyers won. Sellers tried to creep in, right? Selling pressure increased on this red bar. Sellers crept in, said, we're going to take over now. Buyer said, I don't think so. So this stock was tested and it passed the test. It reconfirms the strength of the stock. Okay, it reconfirms the strength of the stock. Now, let's do it one more time. One more time. Take a good look at this. Take a good look at this. Now what? Now we go from a 15 to a 5 to a 2. Here's that same little bottoming tail. Here's that same little minor pivot, I would call it. And all of a sudden, now it's a full-fledged two-minute buy setup. Key point, a battle occurred, which means this area has been tested, confirming who is in control, in this case, the bulls. Okay, so it goes back to what the last slide says. A tail in one time frame is a pivot in another. Okay, so you're just moving on up, moving on up, little battle, moving on up. Move. You don't even really notice it on the 15 minute, do you? You just sit there and go, oh, it's a little bit of a bottoming tail, blah, 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 blah. And it keeps on going higher. You don't even really notice that much of it on the five minute. If stock is moving up, you get a little bit of a red bar and it keeps on going. But on the two minute, all of a sudden, what do we have? A significant area that is a potential viable opportunity. Okay. Now, how does this take us back to management? Hopefully, it's allowing you guys to see inside the chart so that you can realize, and this is out of professional trading strategies, there's a chart in there, I didn't put it in this slide, where it says the pivot is stronger than the bar by bar. Meaning, in this case, you have a 15-minute chart and a two-minute chart on the right. This has a pivot area. This has a bottoming tail. If you were doing management and you said, you know what? I'm going to do 15 minute bar by bar, right? Raise my stop every bar, every bar, every bar. I'm going to trail it up, trail it up, trail it up, trail it up. That's your management strategy. You would likely be better off using two minute pivots. They're a bit more secure, right? The lower time frame pivot is better than the higher time frame bar by bar, okay? But again, that also goes back to personality style. But the main point here is to get you to look inside something that looks like there's nothing here. It just looks like pure strength, when in reality, there was a possible entry or, or a possible area to add to your position. Let's say, hypothetically, you were already in this trade. It moves up, it moves up, little bottoming tail. You're like, there's nowhere to add, I'm looking to add, there's nowhere to add, no. There actually is a buy setup over here where you can add and then potentially raise your stop. Okay. Now, the other thing to consider too, how they happen, right? How it happens is very, very important. You say, are all pivots the same? No, all pivots are not the same. Okay. So when we look at a stock, one of the things that we like to see is a smooth sequential move. Higher highs and higher lows. Higher highs and higher lows. Notice the move up is smooth and sequential. The pullback is smooth and sequential. The move back up is smooth and sequential, right? Higher highs, higher lows. Lower highs, lower lows. Higher highs, higher lows. Moves up, pulls back. It looks like a V, right? Okay, it looks like a V. Over here, what do we have? We have a lot of overlapping bars. Bottoming tail bar here. Red bar here. Green bar here. Red bar this is not what you want to see when you're looking to take a buy setup. So if you look over here, let's say you wanted to take a buy setup. Now you look just to the left and what do you have? Overlapping bars. Why don't you want to see this? Because a battle was fought here between buyers and sellers and the sellers won. So when you come back into this area, you have to respect the fact that the last time the stock traded in this area, the sellers won. So when you come back to that area, it's possible the sellers will win again. 
over here, it smoothed up, it smoothed back. There were no battles fought. Smooth pullback, smooth move back up. So you're looking for V tops and V bottoms, W tops and W bottoms. You're not looking for overlapping slop. This is dangerous. This is not something you want to buy into or even short into. Stay away from this. Focus on this. Okay, it's very, very, very important. This over here on the right will give you headaches. This will build your bank account. Okay, now, you guys saw this a couple months ago. All right, so I'm not going to go over it very, I'm going to go over it very quickly. But you can see right here, guys, this is what? A little turnaround bar? a little bear sandwich right here on a 15 minute chart, okay? And then that turned into a five minute buy setup. And then the red engulfing bar on the five minute turns into a two minute buy setup. So when you look at a chart and go, oh, there's nothing here, drill down and all of a sudden there's a five minute buy setup. Oh, there's nothing here on the five minute, drill down and all of a sudden there's a two minute buy setup. So make sure you're looking deep inside the chart for multiple reasons. One, to see if there's an area of support or some resistance above you. Two, maybe you can get an area to enter the stock that you didn't previously think about. Or maybe you get an area you could add to your position and possibly raise your stop loss. So reading inside the candlestick is a very important thing to do. And it goes back to this. A bottoming tail in one time frame is a pivot in another, okay? Now, I showed you guys this a little while back, all right? So you've seen this slide before, but I think a refresher is in order. We have a 15-minute chart here. Stock gaps up, rips, pulls back, and then rips again. So notice the little um, yellow star, whatever you want to call it. There is support right down here, right? We're pulling back. There's a big bottoming tail, a doji bar. There's support right here in the stock rips. So far, you're looking at this, you're going, sweet, cool. There's nothing wrong here. And there isn't, there's nothing wrong with this. But then when you take a look at this, it gives you a different perspective, doesn't it? Right, different perspective. This stock, you could argue, was in a micro stage four downtrend, right? Lower high, lower low, lower low, lower high, right? Multiple lower highs and lower lows put you in an early stage four downtrend. But you would never short this if you knew the 15 minute looked like this. But when would you short this then? You would short this only when you were too lazy to look at this. Be honest for a second. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but be honest. How many of you sometimes forget to look at the higher and lower time frame? You just, you just trade in a vacuum. You just sit there and go, oh my gosh, the two minute chart looks so good. I don't look at the five or I don't look at the 15 minute or I don't look at the one minute. And this is the stuff that will happen. Sometimes you get away with it, right? Sometimes you get away with it, but most of the time you're gonna pay the piper. So it behooves you to always look at above, at least one or two time frames above and one or two time frames below. I mean, how long does it really take to do that? About one second? Because on your chart, on your platform, you should already have all the time frames on there. Like, you know, when you look at my platform, guys, you see the one minute, the two minute, the five minute, the 15 minute, the 60 minute, the daily. It's all there all the time. Why? So that I don't have to go worry about it. As soon as I pull up a stock, I can see it on all time frames so that this would never, ever, ever, ever happen because we can see it on all time frames. So don't be lazy. Be smart. Remember, this is a business. Take it seriously. Treat it like one. And don't be lazy about it. So in this case, we have a failed sell setup on a two-minute, which is confirming the 15-minute buy setup, making this buy setup even more potent. Okay? And that's how it happens. I blew it up. It's the same slide. I just blew it up a little more so you could see it bigger. That's all. It's the same slide. I just blew it up a little more so you could see it. There's that micro downtrend, double top, right? There's your double top, pulls back, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. It's a stage four downtrend on a micro time frame, and it fails and then goes higher. And this, this is what it looks like on the 15. Okay? Now, I'm gonna change gears here for a second, 
All right, I'm going to change gears here for a second. Because I think lately, the environment that we've been in over the past, I'm going to say, five weeks, okay, since February, since early February, has gotten a lot of people, and this is for traders, this is for investors, this is for everybody, has gotten you guys a little riled up, right? The, the whole chicken little, the sky is not falling, right? This should be big capital, bold print, but the sky is not falling. It's called relax, okay? Woo saw for a minute, all right? I want you to take a look at something for me here. This right here, not including today, this was as of yesterday, so it does not include today. This is the S&P 500 daily chart, okay? This is the spiders, S&P 500 daily chart. This looks like an absolute mess, right? A mess. You look, it goes back about one year, okay? It's about one year, okay? And you're looking, and not that long ago, okay, we peaked in the 339 range, give or take. And not that long ago, like yesterday, we were down in like the 275 range. You know, that's some, um, I don't know, $65 pullback. Okay, and people are going crazy. They're going, oh my gosh, it's it's 15 or 20% off the highs. You know, it broke this pivot, it broke this pivot, it broke this pivot, it broke this pivot, right? It broke this pivot. All of a sudden, it's below where it was a year ago. And people are going nuts. They're starting to do things they did in 2008 and 2009. For many of you, you probably weren't trading back then, but for a lot of you, you were. And I heard people literally say, F the stock market. I'm never going to put money in stocks ever again. Those crooks on Wall Street, blah, blah, blah. I mean, guys, it was rampant. It was prevalent. Okay? And if you look at this chart, you might have cause for concern. You might. All right? You might have cause for concern. But now what? Hold on. This is where we're going to relax a little bit. Take a look at the daily chart. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Okay, same exact thing. S&P 500 weekly chart as of yesterday. This goes back about four or five years. Not quite, almost five years. Now what? We haven't even broken the 200 period moving average. You guys are all going crazy that in one week we could wipe out six months of gains. Uh-huh. And guess what? It happened back here, right, in late 2018. It happened, right? We had about two months, three months of, it's finally happening. It's real this time. It wasn't real over here. It was fake, even though at the time people were saying it was real over here. But no, no, this time it's for real, for real. Not just for real, it's for real, for real. Now over here, it's, it's for real, for real, for real, for real. Okay? You realize how silly and ridiculous you all sound? Because now we're going to do this. It's not even a blip on the radar. You want to go back a year? Chicken little, the sky is falling. You want to go back four years? Eh, it's not so bad. You want to go back 20? And you laugh at this. You laugh at this. Now, why am I bringing this up? Mostly for the long-term folks out there. You realize that most of you out there, and I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, you realize that most of you out there are broke because you do the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, right? You know you know the saying, when there's blood in the streets, it's time to buy. Warren Buffett has a saying, what is it? Buy when others are, are fearful and sell when others are greedy. Guys, tell me, take a look at this chart. Does that even look like a, a blip on the radar? In the last 20 years, is even a blip. It's not even a, a, a barely a blip on the radar here. We're not down here, right, at, at 240 on the spy. We might get there. Who knows? Who knows? We're not down here. Guys, this was nasty. The market went from 155 down to about 60, give or take. I might be off a little, 65, right? A 40 to 50% retracement. What's this? This isn't that bad. 
And then what happened? For the next 10 years, all the people that cursed the stock market in 09 and 08, they cursed it. I'm putting my money under the mattress. I'm never buying stocks ever again. Screw those people on Wall Street. Guess what they just did, all those people? They just got back in in 2018 because they're so scared, shitless, and dumb that they don't realize that what goes up also must come down. Do you guys also realize, here's another tidbit of information, that historically over the last 100 years, the stock market is up 73% of the time. Do you realize over the last 40 years, the stock market is up about 81 to 82% of the time? Over the last 40 years, I'm talking on a yearly basis. Yearly basis, the market is up over 80% of the time in the last 40 years. And 73% over the last 100. But you're going to put your money under the mattress. Okay? Don't complain about the one percenters if you put your money under the mattress. Because you're just being stupid. Okay? I'm not saying or even suggesting that sometimes there's not some pain. Of course there's some pain. The person who literally just retired three weeks ago is going, oh my gosh, I just retired. I have to live on my pension and 401k and the market just dropped 15%. You know the old saying, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of perspective. Stop it. Stop the ridiculousness. Now, on a trading note, let's go back. This is on a trading note. Let's go back to the daily. Guys, if you're a newer trader and you don't have much experience, stay away from this stuff. You will get eaten up and chopped and slopped alive. I'm watching some of these YouTube furu gurus out there. Somebody just lost 40 grand on a biotech stock. Somebody just lost 16 grand on a biotech stock. I just saw somebody else lose 80 grand on a biotech stock. You're all trying to get rich quick. This business is not about that. It's about a long-term consistent approach that makes money over the course of months, years, decades. What happens over the course of a day or a week is irrelevant to you. Heck, it's over the course of even a quarter or six months is irrelevant to you, okay? This stuff is unusual. This won't last that much longer. Maybe it lasts a month longer, maybe two months. But in the grand scheme of things, if you trade for 10 or 20 years, what's a two or three month period? Back in 08 and 09, it was about six months it lasted. All right? This is more normal in terms of the range. This, guys, one day is like a week before. Literally, one day now is like a week or two of volatility. And most of you, I should say most, many of you are getting chopped up, eaten up, eaten alive. What are we doing? We're making a little bit of money, but not a lot. We're just, we're keeping consistent, right? We're not getting hammered, but we're not killing it either. What I'm seeing out there with all the furus, they're getting hammered because they want to look great in front of you because they want to take that biotech that runs from $1.50 to $7 and say, look at me, I'm great. That's not what this business is about. If it is, just go to Vegas for you, okay? So anyway, going to end this here shortly, guys. I hope that you guys learned a couple things today. One, relax. Just relax. This is the monthly chart of the market. This too shall pass. Even if it pulls back a ton, it will pass, okay? It always does. Don't not invest in the stock market because you're scared. Keep investing, keep putting your money in every month for you long-termers. For you intraday traders, chill out. Cut your risk in half. Maybe cut your risk even more than that. Wait for this to pass. You're going to get chopped up, really chopped up. And it won't be worth it because you'll dig a hole that will take you a month to get out of because you don't know what you're doing, all right? You don't want to ever be in that position. And then the last point was, look inside the bar. Look inside the bar. You're going to find better entries, better areas for stop losses, better areas um, to add to your positions, right? I mean, this is a great example of what happens when you drill down from a 15 to a 5 to a 2. Okay, what's just a bar or a small bottoming tail in one time frame is a full-fledged pivot in another time frame. Okay? So think about that for a second. 
drill down. It will also help keep you out of bad trades. The higher time frame kept us safe here. It will also help you determine targets. So really today was kind of a mixed bag. We talked a little bit about trade management, digging inside candlesticks, multiple time frame analysis, big picture, just chill and relax, and also trying to stay out of trouble in general. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a little bit from that. That's going to do it for this week's lecture. And we will get back at it again next week. I'll see you guys then. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.